Hey friends, welcome back to my sewing room. My name is Becca and in today's video we are going to tackle week number three for the Mystery Boo Kuru Quilt Along. Man, that's a tongue twister, isn't it? This was a free quilt along that Fat Quarter Shop posted in July of 2022, but at the time I was a little too busy to tackle it, so I figured this would be a great project to do in September so that I would have a cute wall quilt for Halloween. In today's video, we're going to work on week number three. This is a four part series. I've already done videos for weeks one and two. The patterns are, I believe, a confident beginner level and they are free. So if this is something you want to do, feel free to click the link down below to get your patterns and then come on back over here and sew this with me. Let's dive into this week's project and see what we've got. Week number three, we're going to make this cauldron that kind of looks a little bit like a pumpkin and the black cat. Week three has more pieces than we had in week one and two, so it's going to be really important to stay very organized for this week so along. I've got all of my fabric separated out into the four prints that we're going to be using. We've got lots from each one, so I'm going to pay very careful attention to what I'm pulling. In step number one, we're going to grab two of our fabric H squares and our fabric L long strip. And we're gonna lay it out like this. We want to use the stitch and flip method to attach these pieces of background to either side of the strip so that when we sew them on, we can stitch it, flip it back, and we're gonna have something that kind of looks a little bit like this. I can't really show you easily, but there you go. What we wanna make sure that we're doing is following the diagonal from here to here, and then from here to here. We want to make sure that the line that we're stitching is starting in the opposite lower corners and coming up to the same side. So if we would have kept going, they would have actually intersected, but this piece of fabric is too short for that. We're going to use a method called the stitch and flip. And what that means is basically we're going to stitch on the fabric, and then we're going to flip it over to complete that corner. I'm going to mark a line either using some diagonal seam tape on my machine or some other marking system or even just drawing a line on this background square from one corner to the other. And when I take this to the machine, I want to stitch just one thread right next to that line that I've either got marked on my machine or on the back of the fabric. Honestly, marking the back of the fabric is probably the easiest, but it does take a little bit more time. Once I stitch this, when I flip it over, this piece that I'm flipping over should complete this corner right here just perfectly from the front and from the back. If it doesn't, then I need to assess what went wrong. If when I flip it over, it's a little too short, that means I was too far to the right of that line that I drew on my fabric. And if it doesn't complete the 90 degree, it's too short from the front, then that means I was too far to the left of that line. So that's just kind of some tips and tricks that you can pick up when you're using the stitch and flip method. I'll just demonstrate for you really quick what that stitch and flip looks like. I have stitched my piece on before I trim it. I want to push it over by flipping it and just running my finger along that seam. And then I'm looking to make sure that this piece that I flipped over perfectly completes this part of the corner from the back and from the front. And if everything looks good, then I can take my rotary cutter to this and trim a quarter inch away. Once it's all stitched together, you should have something that looks like this. In our next step, we're gonna take our four fabric N and four fabric R squares, and we're gonna combine them together, making half square triangles. We're gonna use four of each to produce eight total half square triangle units using the two at a time method. And the two at a time method looks a little bit different than stitch and flip. Let me show you how it's done. On the wrong side of four of our squares, I'm gonna to choose to work on the wrong side of our fabric R. We're gonna draw a line from corner to corner on each one of these squares. Now you could totally use a marking system like diagonal seam tape that's on the bed of your machine. However, for this, I think I'm just gonna take the time to draw the line because it's a little bit easier for me to make half square triangle units this method. Once I have my line drawn exactly from the corner to the corner on each one of these, I'm going to pair a fabric R with a fabric N right sides together and make sure all of my raw edges are perfectly lined up. 
Then I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch just under a quarter inch away on either side of the line that I just drew. Once I've done the sewing, I will cut this apart, press it open, and square it up according to what the pattern says it should be squared to. To do that, I'm going to grab a small square ruler. You can do this with any size as long as it is as big as the size you're going to square up to or bigger. I just happen to like smaller rulers when I'm working with smaller pieces because I don't have to manipulate a really big square to square up a little piece of fabric. I'm going to take my little ruler and I'm going to find the 45 degree line on my ruler and I'm going to set that directly on top of the seam where fabric R and fabric N come together. And then I'm going to look for the two inch line on the left side and the bottom side. And if you're left handed, then it would be opposite for you. It would be on the right side and the bottom side. And I'm going to make sure that I have fabric extending past those lines and fabric extending past the edges of the ruler here as well. And I'm just going to take my rotary cutter while I'm holding this ruler nice and tight and in place. I'm going to clean up along the right and then along the top. I'll carefully move that away and then I'm going to turn it around 180 degrees. I'm going to place that 45 degree line back on top of that seam and this time I'm looking for the two inch line on the left and the bottom to hit on top of that cut edge that I just cleaned up perfectly. And then I'm going to come in and clean off the right and trim up the top. And then I have my half square triangle unit perfectly sized exactly where it should be. And because I paid attention to where that 45 degree line was on my block, my line should perfectly be going from corner to corner, which is going to help me preserve my points when I sew this into the block later. The good news is, based on my look ahead in the pattern, you have all of the skills now to put this together. We've covered the stitch and flip method, and we've covered the two at a time half square triangle unit method. And then of course, you just have to make sure you're sewing straight and doing a good quarter inch and staying consistent with that seam allowance, and this block should go together really easily. In the next step, we're going to take all of these half square triangle units that we put together, and we're going to make something that looks kind of like this. I want to say this is like a bow tie unit, but to be completely honest with you, I don't know that I really know what the name of this block is, but I can tell you that our fabric R's should be kissing right in the middle. And then in these opposite corners, we're going to grab our fabric O, which are just squares of our orange, and we're going to put four in each corner. And we're going to sew that together to make a four patch. Once these are sewn together, we'll want to press the seam over towards our O squares, and then we'll sew this row and this row together. And this, because we've pressed over to these areas, should nest just beautifully. Once those seams are pressed, we're going to set two piles of four, making sure that we have all of our half square triangle units in each pile going in the same direction. So the top row, they should be pointing down into the left, and the bottom row, they should be pointing up into the right. And then we're just going to take these to the sewing machine, and we're going to put them under the machine, sewing these right sides together. Now, I want to show you, because we took the time to press underneath these orange squares, this should nest beautifully. And what that means is the bulk of the seam from each of our pieces that we're assembling should bump right up against each other, nest perfectly. They should kiss each other. There should be no overlap and there should be no gap. And you can test that by rolling the top piece back a little bit and looking to see if you are creating a perfect point right here in the middle. If you've got everything lined up and your point is preserved there, you can hold it with your finger and take it to the machine and sew it, or you can pin it or clip it, whatever works for you. I'll be honest with you, I don't always stop and trim every step of the way. I will press, but I don't always trim down to what the pattern says. I feel like if I sew with a consistent seam allowance all the time, things are going to be okay and everything will go together just lovely. However, if you are looking for absolutely precise and perfect and pristine blocks, that is a tip I would give you. Make sure you press and trim every step of the way. So 
If you wanted to take the time to square these units up according to what the pattern says they should be, absolutely go ahead and do that. I will tell you a trick that I have found is if I get the square ruler that is going to be the exact size that this sh should square up to, on the Creative Grids rulers, there's a crosshair in the dead center of this block. So on a four patch, I can just find where all four of those fabrics come together, put my crosshair on it, and then I can clean up the right, the top, and then the bottom and the left. And if I have a rotating cutting mat, I would just be able to rotate this around and clean everything up. Do you need all of the sizes of the square rulers? I don't think so, but if I'm being completely honest, seeing that crosshair in the middle of the ruler does take the math out of it and it doesn't hurt my brain. In our next step, we're gonna take those four units that we just made and put them in the four corners of our block. And the way those triangles are set kind of form a bit of a diamond. Think about these as like star legs set on point a little bit. In the corner of each of those corner squares, you should have a solid orange if everything's oriented right. And then you should also have a solid orange touching the center square. They look like little bows, but to me, they also look a little bit like TIE Fighters. And if you're a Star Wars fan, let me know in the comments below if you see that too. We're going to take our four fabric tees and put them in between each of those blocks and in the center is going to be our fabric queue. Now the instructions are a little hard to see here because the pieces are all small, but what you should be doing is pressing all of the seams from the top and the bottom row in towards this center sashing and then in the middle the seams will press away from the center square. So we're always going to press towards this sashing strip in the top, bottom, and middle. And now, instead of looking like TIE Fighters, I feel like it looks like a little present. We're gonna keep building on this block. So the next step is to grab two fabric Ks, which I happen to have right here. And we're gonna sew these onto either side of this block, just like that. And we will press them out towards fabric K. Now that this unit is built, we're gonna grab our two fabric Ps and we're gonna sew it to the top and the bottom of this unit. And then once that's done, we're gonna press the seam up towards fabric P and then down towards fabric P so that you have something that looks like this. Now we're gonna use four of our fabric H squares and that stitch and flip method that we looked at earlier to snowball the four corners of this unit. Once we have all four of those corners sewn on, then we're just gonna trim away a quarter inch away from where we sewed and we're gonna press the seam bulk up towards underneath the corner that we just sewed on with our background color. This is what we have at the end of that step. This is a cute block by itself, but this is gonna be the body of our cauldron and we're getting really close to having that ready. So we'll set this aside and keep moving. We're gonna make a mirror image pair, kind of like we did last week. So we're gonna take two of our fabric M's, but we're gonna build them so that they look like mirror images. For each of our units, we're gonna take two fabric J's and one fabric H. I'm gonna set one pile aside and work on my first one. In this one, we're going to stitch and flip so that we can snowball the corner in the upper left position. So if this were facing you, that's what it looks like. You're gonna stitch corner to corner, trim it, flip it over. Then in the bottom corner on that same short side that we just stitched, we're gonna do another stitch and flip and it's important to do the top one, then the bottom one, and then we'll work with this one. So one, two, and then three. All of them are gonna be sewn on corner to corner using the stitch and flip method like I showed you earlier. So this is what we have after the end of that one. I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna grab our next pile. We're gonna literally do this in reverse. So we're gonna put on the left side our two and a half inch square. I think that's two and a half inches, not even sure. And I'm going to stitch from the top left corner down towards the bottom right corner. And then we're going to do the two corners over here, just like we did before. We're gonna start in the bottom right corner, stitch from the lower left to the upper right. And then we're gonna do that top corner on the right hand side and we're gonna stitch from the upper left down to the lower right. 
And now we have two units, mirror from each other. These are going to end up being the legs of our cauldron, so you can kind of see the bottom of the cauldron here. We need to build this piece out so that it's the width of our cauldron block. To do that, we're going to grab our fabric F, we're going to put that in the middle of those two pieces, and we need two of our fabric eyes, which are going to go on the ends of either side. So just something that looks like this. Take a seam every step, and we're always going to press our seams away from these units. So these seams will press into the middle, and these seams will press to the outside. Now we're going to put this unit onto the bottom of our cauldron, and we want to make sure that the legs are pointing out and not in, because if these legs aren't touching the cauldron, it's not going to support all the boil and bubble. So we're going to turn it around, put it right sides together, and take our seam. Once this is sewn on, we're going to press the seam open. To do that, I like to finger press first, so I find the seam and separate it with my two fingers on my left hand, and I'm just kind of holding it down while the pad of my finger on my right hand is coming along and just pressing that open. I don't need to get this super flat. All I'm trying to do is to get the fabric to go to either side so that I can convince it to lay in that position with the heat from the iron. There we have the bottom of our cauldron with our legs on it. Now I'm just going to scoot this down and we're going to put the top on. And we want to make sure that when we put the top on, we have it angled down into it, not turned around so that it's a lid. We want it to be a lip, not a lid. So we're going to sew this together and this seam too will be pressed open. And there is our cauldron all finished. It is so cute. It was so much work. Definitely worth it, but we still have to put together the cat, and I think I've deserved a nice coffee break before I even try to tackle that piece. Yeah, well, that was a big break. It's a little while later, but it's still Sunday, and Sundays for me, the afternoons and evenings are reserved for sewing and recording videos. So I'm going to get back to work on that cat. I've still got some coffee left, so that should help me power through. Step number one is going to grab our S, W, and D fabrics, and we're going to make this really cool flying geese unit, but then we're going to snowball the flying geese wings that we put onto the body, which is going to kind of give us the ears for the cat. Let me show you how it's done. First, we're going to make a flying geese unit using fabric D as our background. We're going to put fabric W right sides together on top of this and stitch and flip corner to corner. Once we've stitched, we will trim a quarter inch away from where we just sewed. And then we will press this up and over. I used my fingers to just push this out of the way, and then I'll use heat to get this to lay nice and flat. While I was taking my coffee break, the iron cooled off, so now I gotta wait for it to heat back up. Once that's laying nice and flat, we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Put our fabric right sides together, stitch from the lower left corner, and come all the way up to the corner that's overlapping with this other piece. And that's our flying geese unit. And the next step, we're going to take these two fabric S's and we're going to snowball using that stitch and flip method right on top of the black fabric. And we can actually stitch these both at the same time because they're not going to overlap. So I'm going to run my stitching parallel to the stitching line that I took when I did the black stitch and flip. We're going to trim this away a quarter inch away from where we just sewed. and flip this over, press it with my hand first. So we'll have something that looks like that. That's actually really cute. I like this. I know that this is going to probably build out the ears for the cat, but I could imagine all sorts of different blocks with this type of unit. That's neat. We're going to set this aside for now, and then we're going to grab our fabric U and our fabric CCs, and we're going to make a strip with the two whites surrounded by the three blacks. So basically a strip that's built out this way and all of the seams will press underneath the black fabric. This is what we have after that step. We're going to set this aside. We're going to grab one 
and our only of our AA fabric and one of our J squares. And we are going to snowball the lower left corner using that stitch and flip method. This is what we have built. Now we're gonna take that unit, I'm gonna orient it towards me so that the purple fabric from J is pointing down and to the left. The strip unit that we just built out before this and then our fabric BB, and we're gonna build this block together. So if I turn this around, this is what you're building. I can kind of see the pretty little face of a kitty cat coming together. These seams are going to press away from that middle row, so everything will press towards the top or the bottom. There's a little kitty cat face. Isn't she cute? Now we're gonna grab two of our fabric Zs and four of our fabric Js, and we're gonna make two little paw units. We're going to stitch and flip in opposite corners so that these seams are running parallel to each other, just like this, like that. Do you see how we're making kind of a diagonal strip? That's what we want. We want that twice. Now we have two units that look like this and we're gonna set those aside and grab two of our fabric Y and two of our fabric H and we're gonna do the same thing to both pieces. We're gonna lay our fabric Y down so it's right side up and put our fabric H on top of it and align the raw edges on the right hand side. We're aligning towards that short edge and we're gonna stitch from the top right corner to the bottom left corner both times. Once we've stitched this and trimmed it, we will press it so that the bulk of the seam goes underneath fabric H. So now you should have two units that look like this. The purple triangle should be in the lower right position. We're gonna take this unit that we just made and one of the units that we made before, and we're gonna put it together so that we have something that looks like this. I had it oriented towards me, but if you wanted to see what it looks like towards you, that's it. The unit with the black strip going down the middle will be on the left, and then the unit with just the corner snowballed will be on the right. We're gonna make two of those. Once you stitch that left side on, you're gonna press the seam over towards the right. So this is what you have when it's all sewn together and stitched. You need two of these. Now I have my two paw units. I'm gonna set this aside. We're gonna grab fabric H and fabric X, and we're gonna make three units that look just like that little square where we had the black strip going down the middle, as you can see here, but we're gonna do it with fabric X and fabric H. So I'll need six of my fabric H's and three of my fabric X's, and I'm gonna line everything up so that I can go stitch and flip this just like I did before. Just make sure that when I'm stitching and flipping that my seams are running parallel to each other and they're not intersecting. Now you've got three pieces that should look something like that. We're gonna keep building on these by grabbing our fabric eye and adding it to the side of just one of these. Two of these we'll set aside for right now. Now you should have something that looks like this. And for this unit, it didn't really matter how we had it oriented because no matter which way we turn this, we're gonna get the same unit. We added the same size onto either side of that. So we're gonna set that aside. But for the next two pieces, we need to be careful about our fabric layout. So we're gonna grab both of those units. Our fabric G squares are gonna go on to these units that we sewed before. One is gonna go on the left and one is gonna go on the right. And it doesn't matter which way they're turned because if you turn it around, it's always going to be coming from the upper right to the lower left. Just make sure that you put a G on the left of one and a G on the right of the other. So I'm silly, here I went on about, make sure you put one fabric G onto the left and one fabric G onto the right, and it didn't matter because, watch this. When I have it sewn together like this, I'm still continuing that strip, but when I turn it around like this, it's the same unit. So it's really gonna be just how we're orienting the fabric when we sew it together. So don't stress too much about whether fabric G is on the left or the right, just sew fabric G onto a side of that unit. <laughs> Sorry if I caused you confusion. The seam is going to press underneath fabric G. And now we're gonna take all three of these units to build this really cool kind of like tail for the cat. This piece with the two eyes on either side is gonna be in the middle. And then we'll take one of the units that we just made with the fabric G in the left position and put that at the top. 
and then flip the other one around so that the fabric G is in the lower right position. And we're going to build this. We're going to take our seam right here and our seams are going to press towards the outer rows. That's our tail unit. This is all built. So we'll set that aside. And now we're going to move on to grab a fabric V, which is this really big piece of black. Ow, I just poked myself with a pin. Our final fabric J, and we're going to snowball using stitch and flip the upper left corner. Just like that. Now we have all the little individual pieces for our cat built out. And so now we're going to assemble the cat. Let's start by grabbing our tail unit and our fabric B, and we're going to stitch fabric B to the left of the tail. It might seem counterintuitive, but the instructions say to press a seam underneath the tail. In the next step, we're going to grab our paw unit, and we're going to assemble it to the bottom of our cat body, which is the piece of black that has the snowballed corner in the upper right hand position. And we're going to lay it down. I got to see this towards me. Okay, like that, like that. That's how it should go together. <laughs> I was a little turned around for a minute there. This is going to be pressed up towards the cat body like that. Now we're going to take our fabric A and we're going to put it on the right side of our cat body and sew that together. It felt like this started out really slow, but it's starting to pick up pace now. Press the bulk underneath fabric A. And now this is the bottom, so we're going to grab our tail and put it together like that. When I look at this on my mat, it does not look right. But when I look at the little screen of my camera, it totally looks like a cat butt. <laughs> the instructions say to press that seam down towards the body of the cat away from the tail. There we have our cat butt. It looks great. Now that the back end of our cat is built out, it's time to build out the front end so that we don't have half of a cat. We need all of our leftover pieces except for fabric E, and we're going to build it out so that everything comes together. The first thing that we need to do is attach our fabric eye to this leftover fabric, whatever this is. It's our last fabric that's black. This is going to be the body of the cat. Now we're going to lay out all of these pieces to build out our cat face. Up here is our fabric C, then we have our cat ears, then our cat face, but it's really important to make sure that the little snowballed corner is in the lower left position. That's gonna give our cat face a little bit of body. Then we're gonna take the body of the cat and lay it down here so that our fabric eye is on the left-hand side. You can see the cat starting to come together. And then, of course, we need some paws. So we're going to do this so that the big triangle shoop, is in the lower left position and the little paw is in the front. So this is what we're building. We're going to take all of these seams. We should have done this a few steps ago. So my bad. We're going to do this now. It looks like for this unit knit that we actually sewed together, we should have pressed this over towards fabric X, which we did. So yay. When we put this together, this is going to create two seams and we're going to press away from the ears. And then this seam and this seam will press down. So everything's going to go down except for this seam, which is going to go up into the ears. Let's sew it all together. And there is the front part of our cat. We'll take the back end and sew those units together so that we have a pretty little scaredy cat. The instructions say for this one, we're gonna press the seam open, which makes sense because there's a lot of bolt going on here. In our last step, we're gonna take fabric E and we're going to put that to the left side of our cat. And then on the other side of that fabric E is gonna be our cauldron and then we're done. The instructions do tell us to press the bulk from the cat and the cauldron underneath this fabric E strip. And then we just want to make sure when we put our cauldron on, we're doing it just like this. Keep the cauldron turned the right way. Make sure the legs are at the bottom and the top, the lip, is at the top. And there we have it. <laughs> our week three block. This was a doozy. But isn't it super cute? I'm super happy with how this is going together. And I don't know how many more times I can say super. Thank you guys so much for sewing this block together with me. I know it was a time consuming sew, 
but well worth it in the end because I think this is going to make up the bulk of the visual interest for our mini quilt. Don't forget to come on back next week when we put week one, two, and three together into our final product. I'll see you guys then. Bye!